What has Steve McCurry to say about this image? Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the Afghan girl image, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there's a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer. And I post two videos a week, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays. The Afghan girl image and Steve McCurry has been in the discussion again about the ethics and about the image of the Afghan girl. The original image was taken in 1984 and it was a cover in National Geographic magazine. And Tony Northrup made a video about it and he took the video down. I don't know why, but and, and I have not seen that video. But when I watched Ted Forbes, the Art of Photography channel video about the Afghan girl and about the Tony Northrup's video, uh, I got curious because I met Steve McCurry 2010 here in Helsinki, Finland. And I had a chance to sit down with him and some other photographers and we had a long, long chat about photography and about his images. And I made an audio recording of that meeting and now I thought it would be a really, really great time to publish part of that audio in my videos. I published the whole audio, it's about an hour long, in my blog 2010. That's, that blog post is mainly in Finnish. But don't worry, this video is not going to be an hour long. I only took three parts of that video and one part is of course the story of the Afghan girl. And actually, the main part is what happened afterwards. But uh, let's first listen to how Steve McCurry got into photography. My, my whole uh, ambition in uh, life from when I was 19, since then, was to, to travel and to just see the world and everything in it. And uh, I found that photography was kind of a vehicle to allow me to kind of live a life without having to really work for a living. <laughs> uh, just to kind of you know travel around and take pictures, that seemed like a kind of a great thing to do. I, uh, when I was 19, I lived in Europe for a year, and then I uh, went to school, and when I was in college, I traveled to Africa and different places, and then started working for a newspaper in... Uh, 1974, and, and but I really just I saved my money because my real ambition was again to, to travel and work for National Geographic. So I went to India and spent two years there, just continual, just two years. And at the end of that two years, I came back home and took my portfolio, my pictures, to uh, National Geographic and. Uh, as, as luck would have it, they gave me an assignment. And, uh, and basically, that assignment was in 1980. I had, I've been working for them continually. Uh. So, it was a dream of a young man who wanted to travel around the world. And he figured out that photography could be one way of traveling around. And to be honest, he has succeeded very well. And of course, to fulfill that dream, you need to be a very, very talented photographer. Just decide to be a photographer and start traveling the world won't work for most of us. But with Steve McCurry, luckily, it worked. And the second clip from the audio that I made in 2010 is a part where Steve McCurry tells us how he got his first assignment from National Geographic. Let's listen to what he has to say about that. Most of the stories I, I've done for National Geographic have been my own proposal, have been stories that I actually uh, wrote the idea and the description of the story and then uh, turned it in and then they would either say yes or no. But most of the time they said no. But um, if they said no, I went back and kind of redid it or proposed another story. I, I didn't, I didn't want to work on their stories. I wanted to work on my stories. I wanted to think of places and situations that kind of interested me. And um, so what I did was, as it turned out, that most of those ideas and places were kind of in Asia, sort of between Afghanistan, uh, India, and sort of like Burma and Cambodia. So 
Although I did work in, um, I worked in Europe and Africa and South America. Most of the work I did was in that one region. And so, in a way, my kind of body of work now kind of has a kind of thematic kind of unity to it. I really admire Steve McCurry on the way he started his career. He had a dream to travel and make images. So he figured out that National Geographic could be the place. And that's what he exactly did. He went to India for two years, as he said in the interview, and then he sold his stories to National Geographic. And Steve McCurry is probably one of the rare photographers who can shoot whatever he wants. And most of his work is done that way. And I don't think there are many, very many photographers who can say that I only make images of the things that I really want and can live with the salary of those gigs. Most of us need to do some work that we might not be that thrilled about. But what about the Afghan girl image? Let's hear what Steve McCurry has to say about that. You know, Sharbat Ghul, the, the, the picture which actually ended up running on the carbon National Geographic, it, it was really one of these, you know, kind of amazing situations where, you know, the, the light was right, the, the background uh, was right, the expression was right, the, everything kind of fell into place. And it, a very rare kind of, usually there's some element that's not quite kind of coming together, but th there was just the right mixture of, of these things which kind of really worked. When we had so many letters, people wanting to know, you know how they could help her, they wanted to send her money and you know, clothes and wanted to marry her. It was, it was just an amazing outpouring. So we eventually, I kept looking for her over the years, but in, uh, in 2002, we made this really concerted effort to try and go back. So we, we had a couple of uh, some uh, translators that we had helped us. And we, we just took her picture around uh, all over this refugee camp asking anybody if they remembered her. You know. And uh, the amazing thing was that we found that there were a lot of girls who were claiming to be her. Uh, this girl uh, swore to us that she was the Afghan girl, that she remembered me, and she was so happy that they would see me again. And uh, in fact, she even uh, convinced uh, the film crew I was with that, that she was the, the one. And, but I kept telling... Uh, Everybody, but, but you know, look at her eyes. Her eyes are completely different. I mean, how can she be the? Eventually, somebody we met said, "I remember her brother," and let me see if I can find her brother, and then maybe that'll help lead to her. So, after a couple of days, uh, th this fellow wanted him to meet us, and we we got very excited because he said that you know, the Afghan girl is my my sister, and. Uh, you know, we looked at his eyes and, and we thought that there's, you know, there's a good chance that this could be, uh, you know, we could be onto something here. Eventually, he was the brother and she, he brought in, this is uh, the same, this is Sharbat Kula, who at this point was about 30 years old. And uh, we were quite shocked at, because we, we kind of expected, you know, a 12 year old girl to walk through the door. And instead, it's this, you know, girl who is is thirty years old, but you could see that she had had really lived a hard life, and that life that, that that hardship was really evident in her in her face. And she was married to her husband, who uh, worked in a bakery, uh, made like you know one euro a day or less. But we, the, you know, the great thing was that she was alive. We we had been told for years that was dead, that she had been killed, and so we were really, you know, happy that we, 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 she was still. So the, the magazine wanted me to shoot a cover for the magazine, so I asked her to hold a picture of herself, and uh, I, I only got about five or six pictures, and uh, then she kind of dashed off. Uh, she didn't come back to so sit ended up on the cover. So once uh, this story was published, there was a, you know, we, we started this Afghan Girls Fund, <clears throat> Afghan Girls Fund, to raise money for um, girls' education. So this is the school, which was started and funded by by her 
her picture, basically. So, so it was actually a wonderful kind of end of the story that uh, we were actually able to kind of uh, help her and give back to her, compensate her for the use of the, of the picture. And uh, it, it was really a kind of a win-win for everybody. I mean, uh, she wanted education for her children, and that was kind of provided for. Her big dream was to um, go to Mecca and perform a, a Hajj and uh, National Geographic uh, sent her and her husband. And, and then she said, well, I, I want to send my uh, brother too. And uh, so the brother got in. And then they started realizing that they ended up being like 10 people. In <laughs> As Steve McCurry said, National Geographic has donated money to a girl's school in Afghanistan. So they have paid back. I don't know if they have paid back enough, but they have done something about it. So some of the revenue of those two images, the one that was taken in 1984 and the one that was taken in 2002, has been used to build a school in Afghanistan, especially for girls. And they also send Afghan girl and her family and some other relatives to Mecca, which was her big dream. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.